It's early February, and winter is showing the first signs of breaking. Warm winds from far to the south brought warming rains, and much of the snow and ice melted. And after months of anticipation, I have finally been able to return to the Hidden Valley. Much of the wildlife is hibernating, but the birds are certainly active, soaring high over the valley, hunting, and living free. I had intended to photograph wildlife, but as luck would have it, the warm turn brought forth a great deal of cold-loving fungi, and I came across one of the largest concentrations of turkey tail in a single place that I have ever seen. I couldn't pass by so much, especially since I mix it into the daily tea that I have drunk for many years for health, and it is partly to turkey tail that I attribute that I have not been sick at all in over a decade. And so I thought this would be an excellent time to teach about this remarkable, colorful, yet often overlooked, interesting little fungus. Persons new to mycology and mushroom foraging should take a special note of the humble turkey tail. Not only is it reputed to be medicinal, but it's a safe fungus to work with when first learning identification. This is because among the various lookalikes that exist, none are toxic. Of course, this presumes that you already know basic mushroom identification and can classify polypores from other mushrooms and basic mushroom shapes such as brackets, conchs, and cap mushrooms from one another. Turkey tails are saprophytic. This means they grow on dead and decaying organic matter. In particular, turkey tails prefer to grow on dead hardwood. If you take a close look at the tree from which I am harvesting these turkey tails, you can see that this is a very large old maple with two trunks. The one on the left growing toward the west is still very much alive, yet oddly the trunk on the right has died. The fungus has invaded the dead wood to break down and feed on the old cellulose. Normally, it's much easier to harvest turkey tails, and one can just grab them and pull them from the dead wood on which they're growing. Temperatures today had plummeted back down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, and these turkey tails, as well as the outer layer of wood, were frozen solid, and I needed a hefty knife to effectively carve them away from the stump. The scientific name for turkey tail is Trimetis versicolor, and it's easily distinguished by its bands of color, and the color can be muted, but the bands are very distinctive, and its fuzzy, flat fruiting body. The underside of the turkey tail will be a plain, possibly wrinkly, comprised of countless spores from which the spores emerge. The spores are how the turkey tail reproduces. They're like its seeds. Turkey tail colors are usually somewhat muted, but sometimes they can be quite striking. Turkey tail will grow on any dead hardwood, and sometimes, but rarely, you'll see it on a conifer log or snag. Well, I'm cold, and it's many hours hike to get out of this forest and back to the homestead. Let's get back to the cottage, warm up by the fire, and see if we can brew up a nice pot of turkey tail chaga tea. It's a fairly straightforward process to turn tramadis, or turkey tail, into a healthful tea. You can use the fungi by themselves, though I have to say they don't have any particular flavor. In fact, you would barely notice they're in your tea at all. So if you want, honestly, you can drop one of the kidney or rosette shaped caps directly into a cup of ordinary tea and thereby benefit from it. Just use black tea, green tea, or whatever tea you like, and mix it up as you want, and let the turkey tail mushroom sit in there and steep with the tea. Though my preferred way to use turkey tail is to combine it with other fungi, and occasionally lichens. I will always mix it with inonotus or chaga tea. And frequently, I'll blend the whole thing together with some Ganoderma that I harvest here and there on my ramblings through the woods, and as I live in an area where the air is very pure, it's easy enough to find the lichen, old man's beard, which also has healthful healing properties. I smash the chaga and ganoderma into fist-sized chunks, take the old man's beard and simply rub it briskly in my palms to break it up some and drop it into the brew as well, and then drop in the turkey tail. Let the whole thing simmer but not boil for 45 to 90 minutes until the tea darkens and then it's done. Turkey tail, by the way, will not substantially darken tea. 
In this case, the tea is darkening primarily because of the inunotis, or chaga, which can turn tea almost black. Identifying turkey tail, or termati's versicolor, is a fairly straightforward process. Thank you for watching The Naturalist. Please subscribe to learn more about our marvelous natural world.